Welcome back to beyoungministry.blogspot.com to another blog out of the Gospel according to Luke. Welcome to those who access the podcast through the Be Young Ministry YouTube channel. Today we're in Luke chapter 1, verses 39 through 45, <coughs> which reads, At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt, leaped for joy. Blessed is she who, is, who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. That's Luke chapter 1, verses 39 through 45. Luke begins his gospel with two miracles. The conception of two sons to two different women. Elizabeth, who was barren, was somewhere in her 60s, and Mary, a 12-year-old virgin, who became pregnant by the power of the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth lived in the hill country of Judah. Mary lived in Nazareth, a small town in Galilee, in the north of Israel. In verse 39, we read, at that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea. So about 75 miles separated these two relatives who were experiencing parallel miracles. And in both accounts, Gabriel said to Zechariah and Mary, Do not be afraid. The most often repeated command in the Bible, used 365 times. Mary rushed south because her fear gripped her. When fear grips us, we want to be with those with whom we love and share the most. Fear has the potential to corrode our confidence in God's goodness. We begin to wonder if he cares. Fear turns us into control freaks. When life is spinning wildly, we grab for a component of life we can manage. Our diet, the tidiness of a house, the armrest of a plane, or in many cases, people. The most insecure we feel, the meaner <coughs> we tend to become. Our insecurities bring out the best or the worst in us. For Mary, it drove her to Elizabeth. Since Mary had been told something that was absolutely humanly poss impossible, Mary made a beeline to Elizabeth. This illustrates that she believed the message delivered to her by Gabriel. Elizabeth was one person who would understand what she was going through. So Mary arose and traveled about three days to visit Elizabeth. According to verses 40 and 41, Elizabeth, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, the movement of a baby in a womb is not abnormal. But what is with Elizabeth being filled with the Holy Spirit? What is with, I should say? Elizabeth being filled with the Holy Spirit. Throughout the scriptures, being filled with the Holy Spirit is very often connected to speaking a message from the Lord. And it was at this moment that Elizabeth had a message from the Lord in verses 42 through 45. Being filled with the Holy Spirit means God is taking control of the one being filled. The result is a revelation from God. According to verse 42, Elizabeth, having been filled with the Holy Spirit, in a loud voice, she exclaimed, 
Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. Elizabeth pronounces blessing on Mary because in the Hebrew culture, a woman gained her greatest stature on the basis of her children. And Elizabeth is saying, you are the most blessed because you will bear the greatest child. The remaining portion of verse 42 reads, Blessed is the child you will bear. She is saying, Blessed be the one who will receive all blessings. The word Lord here is used to refer to God. And it's used 25 times in the first two chapters of Luke. There can be no other conclusion than that the child is also God. God is called Lord 25 times. It's an exalted divine title. And when we say Jesus is Lord, we're saying Jesus is God. In verse 43, Elizabeth is in awe. And she says that the mother of my Lord should come to me. Mary is the mother of her Lord. And she is never in scripture, called the mother of God. God always exists. He always has existed. God was never born. I, we can't wrap our brains around that. I'm waiting to get to heaven to, 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 to understand that. The eternal God has always existed. When people say Mary, mother of God, they're not talking about the Mary of scripture. In fact, that's never in the Bible. She was the mother of Jesus, the man. She is not the mother of God. Deity is true of Jesus, but it is not confined to Jesus. We also have the Holy Spirit and the Father. In verse 44, we read Elizabeth's explanation. As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. In verse 45, we read, Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. Notice that Elizabeth speaks in the third person. Anybody who believes God fulfills his promises is going to be blessed. Elizabeth is noting that Mary is an example of a model believer, one who believes the promises of the Lord. Mary heard, believed, obeyed, and worshipped. An example for all of us to follow. And when we do, we will be blessed. The real bottom line here is who frames up the blessing. You see, the longer I walk with the Lord, the more I recognize that my human way of looking at this life is quite to the contrary of God's way of looking at it. His blessing often appears as a curse. And his curse is often seen as a blessing. For example, I became a believer in the Lord Jesus as a result of learning that my dad was dying when I was 17 years old. In fact, three days after I trusted the Lord Jesus, he died. But like Mary, we will not be blessed to recognize the blessings from God until we bow our will to him. My friends, I trust this podcast and this blog is useful to you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.